This is a really cool story of how research evolves because this particular project evolved from discussions from producers and questions from veterinarians saying, we think we might be seeing more heart disease. And the initial question was, are we seeing more heart disease or not? And what we said was, let's go look at the data. We can go in and we can sort out over time, have any of those incidents or risk of heart disease, has that changed? The second part of the question, and this is what gets really exciting, is where you say, what are the potential causes? And everyone had a theory, but very few had any data. Through the help of Angus and through the help of some of our collaborators with the Beef Cattle Institute, we collected a data set. So the analyses that Dr. Johnson did represented multiple years of data, over 20 feed yards, over 4 million head of cattle. And we were able to ask the data questions. The prevalence or the number of cases that we see is about five in 10,000 of calves at the feed yard that die from this condition. If you include cattle that are also removed from the feeding phase because they couldn't stay with their group, that number goes up and it is a little bit higher in those cattle that are removed. And now you'll see 10 per 10,000 that are removed or die from heart disease. So there are multiple things that can affect cattle and can affect their heart. Some of which are of infectious cause or caused by a bacteria or a virus that can cause an infection or it can cause an infection not just in the heart and other places. Congestive heart failure is a little bit different in that congestive heart failure is when the heart isn't working as good as it should be and we see it can't move the blood through the body as well as possible, which leads to some of the same things that we see in people. So they'll be a little bit depressed. They will stay back from the group. They can actually develop fluid or pressure in their chest cavity and in their abdominal cavity and then their liver doesn't work quite as well. Traditionally, and I do want to distinguish this, we often talk about heart disease and you may have heard it referred to as brisket disease. Brisket disease, traditionally what we would think of is high altitude syndrome. So you have a, a, an animal that is adjusted to a lower altitude, you move to a higher altitude. At that higher altitude, you will see problems that can develop into brisket disease or heart dysfunction. Congestive heart failure today is not just high altitude disease. Heart disease is not a new disease. For high altitude, that's been well documented and researched and looked at from a long time ago, over 100 years. Uh, then we started seeing it more in the lower level elevations. So is it becoming more prevalent or are we actually just starting to look for it? So that part, we can't decipher which is which. Are we getting better at documenting it? I think we are and are we looking for it? Yeah, I think there's a lot more uh, feedlot crews out there that are actually trying to pay attention to it. That might be inflating the number of heart disease and it may have always been around previously and just now that we are documenting it better, we know that it's around slightly higher. The factors that we might think about are weight at arrival or weight as they get closer to having disease, gender, or time of year. And those would make sense that they could play a factor in when we see heart disease. And when we go back and we look at the data across multiple yards and multiple years, we don't see that those are having a big impact on their risk of heart disease. The reason we looked at timing of heart disease originally is because that there's a lot of people that feel like heart disease is a late day disease issue. So we wanted to look at the timing and when we just looked at the raw data and plotted that out over time, on average cattle were dying around 110 days on feed, but the there was no dips in the curve or peaks in the curve at any one other time, so it was a gradual cause and we were finding that throughout the feeding period, if we were listening to everybody else's reports of it being strictly a late day disease issue, we were not finding it strictly in the late process of the finishing phase of cattle. Our second analysis we looked at, we included feedlot location, which you got to be careful interpreting that because uh, location doesn't necessarily mean their previous environment. We saw a higher incidence in our, what we would call lower level that elevation areas, which is probably encompassing a lot more feed yards. So that's probably why we're seeing a higher incidence rate, just because there's more cattle in those areas. A higher likelihood that cattle at a higher elevation came from a higher elevation or within a local area. That analysis, we found that there was a higher tendency or a little bit higher probability of having heart disease at higher elevations. But then when we looked at another analysis with a different data set from a different group and population of cattle, 
we're actually seeing a higher incidence at a moderate rate than our higher elevation. And I should probably even uh, put the caveat in there, when we classified our elevations, our higher elevations weren't even considered above 5,000 feet or around 5,000. We had very few yards that would probably classify at that high elevation. And the data that we had access to to evaluate for this project, it has beef type breeds, we have dairy breeds, and dairy cross breeds. And what we see is there's not a lot of difference in the risk of heart disease across those three broad populations. All of them have heart disease. There was a wide range of case definitions of what they called heart disease, which we all lump into one group called heart disease. So if we get better at describing and better collecting data, then we'll only know more about what's actually going on. I don't know if we'll ever get to 100% completeness, but once we get to a better understanding of the overall impact of that, then we can make decisions a lot better as producers, managers, and uh, health per personnel. If we didn't have the Angus Foundation funding, we wouldn't have been able to A, start on this project right away, and B, focus on providing answers that are actually relevant to producers.